And finally, we have gotten to the final tip, the most surprising and the most underrated, and the one that I think people won't be thinking of when they watch this video. Hello, I am Jamie from Jamie's Library and welcome to another Imposia video on Imposia's Book Club. Today, we're gonna be talking about 24 hour readathons. I love doing a 24 hour readathon. I have done quite a few in my time. I always thought I was a really slow reader, but I recently did a 24 hour readathon where I read six entire books in one day. I think I have come up with some perfect strategies to completing a 24 hour readathon, which I wanted to share with you guys. Basically, I have four tips and make sure you stick around to the end because I have a very surprising and underrated tip that I'm gonna mention. So make sure you stick around and without any further rambling, let's get straight into the tips and tricks for completing a 24 hour readathon. So the first tip and trick is a very fun one and that is snacks. Honestly, in every single readathon I have done, I have gone out before it starts and grabbed as many snacks as possible because it just makes a readathon so exciting. I mean, I have something to look forward to. I have treats to give myself. What I like to do is I like to get my favorite treats. Once I have read at least half of a book, I can treat myself. Or once I've read like 300 pages, I will grab some chocolate and I will snack on that. And that's my treat and it helps me get going and makes me more excited and motivated to read more because I know that I have treats coming up. It's just so fun. It just makes a readathon so much more fun when I've bought exciting treats. Some of my personal favorite snacks are obviously coffee. I love a good coffee. I mean, that's just a staple when it comes to staying up as late as you can and reading as much as you can. Microwave popcorn, so snackable, so good. Chocolate, obviously, specifically cream eggs. And also a bit of chopped fruit, like chopped apple, chopped orange. So yum, so refreshing. If you have these, I guarantee you'll have an amazing 24 hour readathon, I promise. The next tip is about book choices. When you're doing your 24 hour readathon, obviously you feel more successful with the amount of books that you actually read. So graphic novels and short books are your friends. Books that are like 100 pages or so, like 150 pages are perfect. And graphic novels are so good because you get your page count up, you get your book count up, but it takes seconds to read a page. So those are just incredible. I honestly cannot recommend them enough. And it is really good as well when you're reading like small words. If you're feeling like your eyes are getting strained, your brain is getting a bit muddled, you can pick up a graphic novel and just look at the pretty pictures and you're still getting an amazing story. Some of my personal favorite graphic novels and short books that I have read in a 24 hour readathon are the Death Note mangas. Very thick, lots of pages, but you get through it very quickly. The Heartstopper graphic novel series, again, not much actual words on the page, but still so much beautiful content, such a good story. Read this in about 45 minutes during a 24 hour readathon once. And also My Neighbor Totoro. This is a novelization of the Studio Ghibli movie. So beautiful and also some pretty pictures to break up the pages. So books like these, along with your big novels with the small writing, are just perfect because it means you feel so much more successful when you finish one and you can up your book count for your 24 hour readathon. The next tip is to do a 24 hour readathon with your friends. When you're doing a 24 hour readathon with other people, whether that be your friends in real life or people that you know on social media, it honestly is just so much more fun because you can motivate each other. You don't feel like when you're getting really tired, you don't have that moment where you're like, what's the point of this? You just get to spend all this time reading with your friends, chatting, updating, seeing how each other is going. You can FaceTime your friends who you're doing with it and like read together, have a little reading party. It just makes a 24 hour readathon so much more fun. You get so much more reading done almost when you're competing with other people. Like it's almost like it's, you're doing it with your friends, but you can kind of like compete with them. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, who's going to read the most? I don't even know. I just love doing it with friends. I always find that I have the most fun when I'm on Twitter or my social medias and just chatting with people about how we're doing, what we're reading. It just makes you feel a little less alone and it's just something fun to do with your bookish friends. So absolutely recommend that. And if you don't have bookish friends in real life, Honestly, if you go on Twitter and say, hey, I want to do a 24 hour readathon, who is keen? I promise you people will be keen because people love a 24 hour readathon. And finally, we have gotten to the final tip, the most surprising and the most underrated and the one that I think people won't be thinking of when they watch this video. But that is to not be afraid to stop reading to take breaks. I know that is very surprising because you might be thinking, but I'm supposed to read as much as I can in 24 hours. 
and that's true sure that's the point of a 24 hour readathon but if you're not ever taking a break going for a walk out in the sunshine going and you know just having a chill moment with your thoughts you're just gonna get burnt out you're gonna want to stop reading you'll be reading slower you won't be taking in any information and it's just not worth it you need to be taking breaks in order to read more because then when you're feeling tired when you're feeling exhausted take your 20 minutes and then get straight back into it and i honestly think that this tip is the most important one if you're not taking breaks and you're getting burnt out then you're not having fun and honestly, the entire point of a 24 hour readathon is to have fun. Because if you're not having fun, then what's the point? You're just doing chores. You're seeing reading as a chore. But no, the entire point of a 24 hour readathon is just to have fun. So take your breaks if you need them. Take an hour's break and then add an hour on at the end and say that it was in 24 hours. There's honestly no rules when it comes to a 24 hour readathon. It's just supposed to be a good time. So those are all my tips for you guys on how to have a successful 24 hour readathon. I honestly see a successful 24 hour readathon as just me having a good time, having fun, and feeling accomplished with what I've read. I hope these tips have helped you. I hope that you are keen on doing a 24 hour readathon soon because they are really fun. And let me know in the comments how many books you think you can read in 24 hours. The most I have done is six. I'd like to see if anyone is confident enough to believe that they can beat me. And keep an eye out for another Imposia video coming very soon. And I will talk to you guys all very soon as well.